Hey guys, it's JC. Welcome back to my channel. I have been busy this week. I've been trying so hard to find some time to chat because you've been on my mind. I have some things to talk about today, but I'm running errands in my car and I finally thought I'm just going to pull over and <laughs> we're going to just have a moment. So this week, the thought for me that I want to share, it was kind of a light bulb moment. It goes with a lot of the emotional eating videos I've been doing lately, but it also kind of goes with just overall wellness improvements and, and shifting gears to try to get in a better place with our health. It's the idea that our body has a voice, a way to communicate with us, and that it's constantly trying to send messages to us, but we are expert at ignoring it. I really wish sometimes that my body could like grab me by the shoulders and like shake me and get me to pay attention because the, the way our body speaks is more subtle. And I will say for decades, decades, I ignored it. I, I heard an author say once, um, that the body can be like the forgotten middle child in a family, which is terrible, which like wrecks me. <laughs> like that, that birth order, you know, you're the middle child. And I've even talked to my middle kids about this. It's a thing, but the forgotten middle child where it gets ignored or lost or not put as a priority. For example, and this is where it ties into emotional eating for years, I coped with mental and emotional challenges in a way through food, through sweets, through chocolate, but by doing that, because I was trying to find a way to cope with those things, I was throwing my body under the bus every time. I was using those things as medicine for my soul or my mind or my emotions, but it was not medicine for my body. Doing that didn't help my body at all. <laughs> and it began to show signs and symptoms that that was the case, but I did not listen to that voice. I didn't even know that's where it was coming from. And the worst, to make it even worse, I mean, all of that medicine for my soul, like we've talked about in other videos, wasn't even helping. It was making the mental and emotional worse. But all that aside, are we throwing our body's needs under the bus, like I said, to meet some other supposed need of stress release, relief or boredom relief, or, um, I mean, what are all the reasons we eat, right? We binge. And, and in the long run, we are doing so much harm to this sweet vehicle that we are in to go through life. And yet we're not even thinking about it. It's the forgotten, forgotten middle child, right? I think it's funny that I'm in my car. I didn't think about this till right now, <laughs> but I have heard from other authors. Sometimes we, we often treat our cars better than we treat our bodies. If the check engine light went on, I mean, yeah, sometimes we drive and drive and drive and just hope that it won't blow up, right? And and we do that with our bodies too. But for the most part, if your, our car starts making sounds or sputtering or running or smoking or whatever symptom, we take it in and we get it looked at because we know we need it in good running order to live our life. And so we will spend the money to get a mechanic to fix it and to make sure the good gas goes in it or good oil or whatever. This vehicle is carrying us through life even more than our car does. But are we, we don't take, sometimes, sometimes, we don't take any better care of it, less care of it than we do our cars. We spend more money on our cars, sacrifice more to keep our car in good shape. I've heard the analogy once and it's always stuck with me. It's like, it's like me buying you a sports car and bringing it as a gift, but saying you have to put mud in the gas tank instead of gas. You, you just, that's the only stipulation. We know the car wouldn't function, but yet our main coping mechanism for many of us who've been addicted to sugar or emotional eaters, or we eat for all kinds of reasons, we're putting mud in this gas tank and it is trying to talk to us and tell us through its voice that it's not working. But the voice is, it's not words, it's chronic fatigue. It's adrenal fatigue. It's, um, and so I have to live on more and more caffeine because my body just isn't running that well. It's depression, anxiety, it's digestive problems. It's, I mean, brain fog, memory problems. Like how many symptoms do we need to pile up and up and up before we'll actually listen to what our body is crying out for? 
I just, I kind of didn't care because I wanted my food so bad for that hit that I just kept making it suffer. That poor middle child was not getting any love. I was trying to give love to my emotions and my mind and it in the wrong way, but I was still trying to just, you know, oh, I'm so stressed. I'm so depressed. I need to eat. I need to eat. And yet it was just such a disservice to my body and doing so much damage. But we don't connect the dots. It's the forgotten middle child. We just don't even think about our body's needs because the voice is so quiet sometimes. That check engine line is so dull that we can ignore it for a very long time. This is something I've seen over and over and over as a health coach, but also in my own life. Like how long will we stay in denial that our body's needs are just as important? And, and often by addressing the body's needs that it's crying out for, it will fix the mental and emotional. It will. It did for me. Um, but we just do it backwards and we think it's working and it's not. So here's my encouragement. Oh, I almost dropped my phone. Sorry, my hand's going numb. I don't have a cool little thing to hold it. So I'm holding it. Um, here's my invitation for this week. Watch your own life and, and see how your body is trying to communicate with you about what needs aren't being met. Does it need more healthy food? Does it need you to break that addiction? Does it need more sleep? And you were up binge watching TV because you're trying to use that as a coping mechanism, but your body's saying, I can't function on this. And so you just down more caffeine the next day because of these habits. Is your body crying out that what you're doing right now isn't working? Are you going to listen to that voice? Listen to that check engine light and say, you know what? if I don't take care of this body, it's not going to function and my life is going to spiral out of control. And then I'll have ignored it too long and it's too late. And now suddenly I have all these health problems. It's okay if you're at that point, no judgment. <laughs> I've been there too. And I, I've been just this week, I worked with several people in my clinic where it had got to that point. One had been going through an incredibly, incredibly difficult year. Husband left parent passed away hospice in her home so much hard stuff and the body did get ignored because the emotional energy had to go to something else so I get that at some points in our life that's just how it goes I was that way when I had several ki little kids at home and I was just overwhelmed and I was up at night and I couldn't even think about healthy food because I was just like coping I get that sometimes we're just mired in it and we're doing the best we can but that voice is still there trying to communicate with us saying, if you will care for me, <laughs> I will help you in all this stuff you have to deal with. If you will take care of me again, not just healthy food, but moving our bodies. I've been sedentary really, really bad the last couple of years because all the work I was doing was on a laptop. I was writing a book. I was working on this platform and I was on my laptop constantly. And I didn't pay attention to my body. My body was starting to get tighten up. I was starting to get more chronic pain in my, in my mouse arm, you know, in the one arm that's always working on. And I would just, you know, I'd take some meds or I do, I get a massage, or I'd, but I didn't I could let it get way out of control. My body had been trying to tell me. And now I'm having to do a more aggressive rehabilitation because I let it go too long. See how many different areas where our body's trying to tell us, trying to tell us, but we just stay in denial and we're like, no, just take some meds, just drink some more caffeine. It's okay. No, I got to keep going. I don't have any other choice. Sometimes making that choice and asking the Lord to help us slow down and make that choice to care for our health, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, like whatever our body's asking for to slow down and, and listen is going to save us so much heartache in the long run. Again, I'm the biggest, I'm so guilty of this. So it's coming from all the love. Listen to your body this week. Listen to the voice and what it's trying to say and see if maybe it has been the forgotten child, middle child in your life. And it needs some love. Hope that helps. Have a great week.